Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. So, obviously, teenage uh, environmental activist. This actually doesn't seem to have a blurb unless it's got one on the inside. Um, yeah, okay, it does have a little blurb, so I'm going to read that. I'm going to check out my tabs. I don't have too many. And then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Greta Thunberg was born in 2003. In August 2018, she decided not to go to school one day, starting a strike for the climate outside the Swedish parliament. Her actions ended up sparking a global movement for action against the climate crisis, inspiring millions of pupils to go on strike for our planet, and earning her the prestigious Prix Liberté, as well as a Nobel Peace Prize nomination. Greta has Asperger's and considers it a gift which has enabled her to see the climate crisis in black and white. No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference is Greta's first book in English, collecting her speeches from climate rallies across Europe to audiences at the UN, the World Economic Forum and the British Parliament. Her next book, Scenes From The Heart, is a memoir, jointly written with her mother, the opera singer Marlena Ehrnman, her sister Beata Ehrnman and her father Svante Thunberg. So, so this is from the speech Almost Everything Is Black And White and she makes a good point here. Um, if burning fossil fuels was so bad that it threatened our very existence, how could we just continue like before? Why were there no restrictions? Why wasn't it made illegal? To me that did not add up. It was too unreal. I have Asperger's syndrome and to me almost everything is black or white. I think in many ways that we autistic are the normal ones and the rest of the people are pretty strange. They keep saying that climate change is an existential threat and the most important issue of all. And yet they just carry on like before. If the, if the emissions have to stop, then we must stop the emissions. To me, that is black or white. There are no grey areas when it comes to survival. Either we go on as a civilization, or we don't. So this is from Prove Me Wrong at the World Economic Forum. And she just, again, another very valid point. Some people say that we are not doing enough to fight climate change, but that is not true. Because to not do enough, you have to do something. And the truth is, we are basically not doing anything. Yep. And uh, the Our House is on Fire, it's one of her more famous speeches from the World Economic Forum. Um, and she says, We must change almost everything in our current societies. The bigger your carbon footprint, the bigger your moral duty. The bigger your platform, the bigger your responsibility. Adults keep saying, we owe it to the young people to give them hope. But I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to act as if you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if our house is on fire because it is. Here we have a great point she makes on the subject of cathedral thinking. Um, now she does again, she says, our house is falling apart, our leaders need to start acting accordingly, because at the moment they are not. If our house was falling apart, our leaders wouldn't go on like you do today. You would change almost every part of your behaviour as you do in an emergency. If our house was falling apart, you wouldn't fly around the world in business class, chatting about how the market will solve everything with clever, small solutions to specific isolated problems. You wouldn't talk about buying and building your way out of a crisis that has been created by buying and building things. Uh, and finally we have here her can you hear me speech. And so she says, perhaps the most dangerous misconception about the climate crisis is that we have to lower our emissions because that is far from enough. Our emissions have to stop if we're to stay below 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius of warming. The lowering of emissions is of course necessary, but it is only the beginning of a fast process that must lead to a stop within a couple of decades or less. And by stop I mean net zero, and then quickly on to negative figures. That rules out most of today's politics. The fact that we are speaking of lowering instead of stopping emissions is perhaps the greatest force behind the continuing business as usual. The UK's active current support of new exploitation of fossil fuels, for example the UK's shale gas fracking industry, the expansion of its North Sea oil and gas fields, the expansion of airports as well as the planning permission for a brand new coal mine, is beyond absurd. And um, here again just a little point on the subject of cathedral thinking. She says, avoiding climate breakdown will require cathedral thinking. We must lay the foundation while we may not know exactly how to build the ceiling. Sometimes we just simply have to find a way. The moment we decide to fulfill something, we can do anything. And I'm sure that the moment we start behaving as if we were in an emergency, we can avoid climate and ecological catastrophe. Humans are very adaptable, we can still fix this. But the opportunity to do so will not last for long. We must start today, we have no more excuses. And um, those are all the bits that I wanted to highlight. I mean, what's kind of troubling is obviously some of these were three, three years ago and we haven't really made any progress and you know, the clock is ticking. Um, my main gripe about this would be that in a few places she literally just repeated the same thing that she'd said before verbatim. But that's fine with speeches, like that's kind of common practice. It just then gets a bit weird when those speeches are printed in a book because you're reading literally the same paragraph that you read 10 pages ago or whatever. Um, but overall, I did find this, I thought it was quite inspiring. It doesn't necessarily lay out solutions, 
but I mean, she's not a scientist. The scientists have already laid out the solutions, we just don't act upon them, you know? And so this is much more, I think, inspirational, and it makes you, again, from the title, it makes you want to make your own personal difference. Um, and I know I've been definitely thinking a lot more about my carbon footprint since reading this. So yeah, I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5, it was pretty good. Um, I hope Greta keeps on doing the good work, I know a lot of people hate her. Feel free to, I guess, it's a free society. But it is a bit like shooting the messenger. <laughs> Um, yeah, Greta Thunberg, no one is too small to make a difference. So there you have it, that's what I made of this book. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.